you have a question during the show, we want to hear it. Your input is a big part of what makes this show successful. And we and we thrive on your energy and insights. Whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion you just have to share, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make absolutely sure your message gets on the air and featured on the show, there's an easy way to do that. Use the super chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box. Send in your super chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air, and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We really rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love, and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead, let us know what you're thinking. Hit that super chat button, and let's keep the show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to the gsmcpodcast.net to tip, donate, and leave a comment or question there. We couldn't do what we do without your amazing support, and we're so thankful to have you as part of our community. We start off with the Manchester City and Arsenal draw. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a lot to discuss here. Some controversial, some some controversial decisions, some red card, you know, you know, red cards, all that. A lot of, you know, uh, tensions, heavy um, rivalry brewing, a little element of a uh, nastiness to the game that we don't really see much in this day and age. There was, um, we have that, we have that to discuss. We have. Um, you know, last minute goals, wonder goals like we saw from Califiori. Whole it was just amazing. Uh, uh, everything, everything happened. Everything was going on in this game, and uh, it it really is a uh, it really had everything going. I believe on YouTube in America it was like the ninth trending thing. And keep in mind, this is on a Sunday where there's NFL. You know, where the Dallas Cowboys are taking on the Ravens. You know. The, the Chiefs taking on the Falcons, the Niners playing the Rams, you know, this is, you know, and this was one of the, you know, top watched events, most trending events on YouTube ahead of all those games. So there was a lot going on, a lot going on. And going back to Arsenal, uh, where to start off? Look, uh, this is a very good game. A lot of things going on. For nil, we thought, you know, I thought entering this game, could, this was going to potentially be another one of those snooze vests. Last year, City and Arsenal took on each other. Both games, even the one with the late goal at the Emirates early on that Arsenal were able to win, both games were pretty boring and a little dead to watch and a little hard to watch. Um, this game was anything but... Um, you had high flying football, high energy football in that first half specifically. You know, Erling Holland, we know what he's done so far nine goals in four games. He makes that 10, 10 and five games with that opening goal. The fastest player to get to 10 goals in, in a season. Um, the goal came in the ninth minute. Brilliant. A lot of people didn't doesn't talk about this. They talk about Holland scoring the goal, and rightfully so. It was a really, really good goal, and the way he held his run to make sure he wasn't off sides because the ball being played in wasn't exactly played in, you know, as quick as it should have been. But nobody talks about Savio in that position. You know, he receives the ball, and he just has a quick sort of half Cruyff turn. That um, allows him to get away from a Calafiore that's charging at him, that's trying to make a play on the ball. And then it allowed him to get into space where he was driving into space. And then, yes, you know, you could say he played it just a little bit too late, but Erling Holland, you know, being able to hold his run, not taking the bait, not, you know, not going off sides, holding his run, making sure he was level with Gabriel. And then the ball gets played into him, which is straight down the um, straight splitting the center halves, which um, I have some people that were critical, uh, that were very critical on the uh, positionings of the center half. I do have to say Gabriel and Saliba were put in a vulnerable position in with that Calafiore, he decided to commit on Savio, Savio. Once Savio got past him, you know, Gabriel, you know, he sees that Calafiore is committing there. He's going to have to 
you know, he's going to have to take a few steps uh, to his left-hand side to protect the space that Calafiore leaves committing for that ball. That allows the center halves to get split with Saliba and Gabriel. I do think once Savio, you know, once Savio continues to drive, in the, drive the ball forward, I do think there's a little bit of time for Gabriel and Saliba, both of them, to, you know, tighten up the space in between them to, you know, close off the lane for Erling Haaland to run through. They, you know, they're not, they don't react to that. They're, you know, they're trying to play Haaland off almost. And then, you know, this ball gets played in. And then again, really good finish outside of the boot. Very similar finish to Nicholas Jackson. He had um, um, earlier um, or a day before that really good finish he had against Swiss Brom. Similar, you know, outside of the boot. Really quality finish there from a quality player. And, you know, there was a lot of talk of him not showing up in big games. Well, that was a big moment. And you can see from the celebration, you know, that was a big moment for him getting that goal. And then I thought Arsenal's response was pretty good in terms of the fact that I didn't think, you know, I didn't think that the pressure getting away, going down early, playing away, didn't really get to them. Um, I thought they started playing some really good ball. Um, I thought they were, you know, you know, they didn't create that many clear-cut opportunities following the goal, but they, you know, they... They played themselves back into the game. They weren't dominated after that opening goal. I do have to say, I thought the response for Arsenal in general was was good. Um, was good. I thought they were able to have control of the ball in certain areas. Um, I thought they held on to the initial line of pressure that came from City, and then when the opportunity came that they could, you know, that they could take advantage. They took advantage and it came around the 21st minute um, with a quick free kick being played, which, you know, there's controversy regarding that in terms of whether or not it should, whether or not it would have been allowed. Um, but, you know, one before we get to that, so quick free kick gets played into the pass of Martinelli. Kyle Walker talking to the referee a little bit late getting back. He does find himself, he does get back into a positioning that he, you know, He's in between Martinelli and the goal. He has himself a goal side, and he, you know, he's in a good position there. He's in a position to stop Martinelli from, you know, getting into the box, and he's also, you know, in a good position to prevent Martinelli from putting in a cross. Uh, you know, in that position, Martin, um, Kyle Walker defending Martinelli, Savio decides to, you know, play a little bit closer to Kyle Walker just to allow if Martinelli does cut inside to double him up potentially. And that leaves Calafiori coming in late. And um, one of the goals I've ever, you know, one of the top goals that I've seen so far this season, I mean, it was absolutely true. That strike was true. Sensational strike. The curling effort to it. The way, it, as soon as it left his feet, you just thought, oh... This is gonna belt into the back of the net. It just looked like pure class, pure quality. It was a sensational goal. And by the way, that's his first start for Arsenal. The for that moment to come in this game, in this, you know, at the Etihad, what a moment, what a goal. And honestly, you know, that and the set piece, it was gonna take moments like that for Arsenal to create because this is an Arsenal team that hasn't created much from... In fact, since Odegaard's been, Odegaard has been out, they haven't created any... They haven't scored any goal from open play in terms of, you know... Well, they you know, this, this is a goal from open play, obviously. But when I mean a goal from open play, as in, you know... It was either going to be like a wonderful moment of magic like this, or it was going to come off a set piece like they did against Tottenham, like they did on the second goal here today. And then... Um, and then, uh, and then this is gonna be like a moment of magic, a moment of quality. That's the way Arsenal was gonna able, were going to score in this game, and it, and you know it was amazing moment, amazing goal uh, for Calafiori. Um, regarding the controversy of that decision, um, look, whether or not the referee should have allowed Kyle Walker to, you know, go back is there's a room for interpretation there. Um, I personally think he should. If he's calling him to have a conversation, then he should give him more than enough time to, you know, get back into his proper positioning. 
But what's not arguable at all is the free kick was not played at the right area. It was played like 10 yards in front of where the foul actually occurred. So there, you know, that's inarguable there. Okay, so then they get that goal. Then the second goal comes from Arsenal. Set piece, they take advantage of set piece. And honestly, um, they could have taken advantage minutes earlier because Martinelli had a very similar opportunity from that similar range. Couldn't really get, you know... Couldn't, you know, redirect it back into the goal. Couldn't get underneath the ball there. But, you know, that was a warning sign to City. And I tell you what, literally like six, seven minutes later, it's like, it's the exact same play. And it's an interesting, you know, this is a set piece play that they've practiced before. You know, all the players, as Saka is starting to run up to take the corner, a lot of the players you know, go to crowd the goalkeeper and it's really made this, you know, set piece opportunity is really made for Gabriel. Uh, you know, he's the, you know, he's the primary target here because he's the only one that is making that run into the six yard mark to attack the ball. Everyone else is, you know, basically being used to block off um, Ederson and he's able to, you know, He's able to do a nice little hesitation on Kyle Walker right outside the penalty mark. And then he runs with momentum into the six-yard area. And he, you know, it's a, it's a walk-in. It's, a, it's an easy header for him to make from that position. He had an opportunity like that earlier, couldn't take advantage of. And just like that, you can't give, them, can't give a guy like him, Gabriel, two opportunities to hit a header like that. Um, a lot, some people are arguing, should that be, a, you know, you know, is, should that be allowed or not? Oh, come on, man. Like, stop talking. Like, this, this is football. You know, you could have crowd the keeper. If anything, Ederson, you know, and a lot of goals has happened so far in the past couple of weeks, you know, where crosses being played in the six-yard area. You had the Vicario um, against Arsenal. You had two, actually, from uh, Mike Mignon going up against Liverpool. In these sort of situations, especially on this one, if I'm Ederson, the ball is not really bring in with, you know, crossed with electric pace yes you're getting crowded but you kind of have that you kind of ha have to have that you know mentality you're a goalkeeper you need to have a command of your six yard area you need to have that mentality okay if you know you know i'm going through everyone to get the ball you know i'm you know if there's if you're gonna come and get in my way well i'm gonna go through you and you're gonna and you're gonna feel it you know he has to have that sort of mentality because that's what's, you know, you know when you're getting crowded and the ball is being played in the six-yard box, you need to have that mentality. I'm going to get to that ball no matter what. And if I have to go through an Arsenal player, so be it. If I have to go through my own player, so be it. But a ball is not coming in my six-yard box and I'm not getting on the end of it. I get to use my hands. They don't. They don't get to use their hands. So for me, I thought Ederson, you know, and I'm not saying it was a goalkeeper mistake or anything, but, you know, for me, I they do. Uh, I really think that he should have that mentality. Uh, you know, I'm getting that ball no matter what, and no matter who I have to go through. So that goal happened to make a two-one Arsenal. Then the big moment in the game that everyone's talking about, huge, huge moment, came in around the fifty first or second minute or so. This is in first half stoppage time, so forty-five plus about seven or eight minutes or something of that nature. Trossard gets sent off initially watching it. Um, I thought it was for the, you know, the initial sort of uh, uh, shoulder lean that he makes on a 50-50 ball with Bernardo Silva. But then, uh, you know, but then, uh, you know, later on in the second half when I was going through social media, I realized that he was actually sent off for the kicking of the ball away after the whistle, which, yes, it was after the whistle. There's there's no clear. There's, that's very, very clear. It was after the whistle um, that the um, that the uh, yellow, that, the, that he made that kick. And, yeah, uh, you know, he got the second yellow. And I have to say, look, look, look. Yes, it's, you know, it's harsh and... For Arsenal to get done by two of these in the last, you know, few games or so with the Declan Rice incident and now this is, you know, very unlucky. But in both situations, you you know, Declan Rice and Leandro Trossard gave the referee an opportunity to give that second yellow. And 
That's something Mikel Arteta has to adjust with this Arsenal team. The discipline has to be better. They can't continue to give the referee an opportunity to make that play. It's a really, really stupid thing to do when you're on a second. Number one, forget the forget the kicking of the ball after the whistle, which is a yellow card. There's you know there's no arguing that by the rules of the game that is a yellow card. But on top of that, um, there was the. Uh, there was the initial, you know, foul that he committed on on um, on Bernardo Silva going for that 50-50 ball where he's leaning in with this with the shoulder into the back of Bernardo Silva. Why even make an attempt on the ball like that when you know you're on a second yellow? What you play, the way you play when you're on a yellow card versus when you're not on a yellow card should be very, very different. And I understand you're playing against City and you want to take advantage of every opportunity that comes. And if there's a chance you can win the ball in a dangerous area, you want to win it. But that's just, you have to be better. You have to be more disciplined. You have to change the way you play when you're on a, second, when you're on a yellow. You have to change the, the way you play. And you can see from the one from that red card, you, the desperation on the um, on the Arsenal players pleading. You saw Saliba, you saw Saka, you saw Durian Timber. The desperation on their face, especially with Timber and Saliba, because uh, they know how difficult it is playing with ten men. They faced it against Brighton, and they know with the second yellow and a red card, there's no chance for VAR to intervene. You know they find it. You know, and then you saw Mikel Arteta putting his. You know, jacket in his face, the frustration he had uh, uh, as well. Um, but um, again, you know, and it, yes, it's very, very harsh and very, very unlucky that Arsenal have gone on the wrong end of these sort of decisions now within a few weeks. And in both, and, you know, in those, those two red cards have probably cost Arsenal, you know, four points so far in this time, in this uh in their campaign with the yellow with the red card against Brighton that dropped, cost them three points and then this one, but uh, you know that's football. That you know that's football. And then you know we know from the moment that they got down to ten men, that second half was gonna be very defensive football for Arsenal, playing away at the Etihad, playing with ten men. We knew they were gonna get you know eleven men in the box and defend for their lives, and they defended incredibly. How many times did Ruben Diaz and Mateo Kovacic have the ball at the edge of, or Kyle Walker have the ball at the edge of the box and just try to shoot a prayer because they, they had no opportunity to play in between the lines against this Arsenal team. They were very, very good defensively, very, very compact. They made any, you know, they made last ditch tackles that were needed. They didn't give up many clear cut opportunities. There was not space to play in. There was no play, space to play in behind. Really, overall, they defended really, really well. Raya made some very good saves as well. And City were pretty poor too. No overlapping. No real, you know, didn't move the ball enough uh, from one end to the, from one side of the pitch to the other. Uh, you know, didn't make little runs that potentially could attract defenders it, uh, into certain spaces that you can find pockets to take advantage of. There was none of that. You know, there was none of that. The Man City, they looked poor. They do really look poor and they never looked like they were connect they were able to break them out. Break them um break them down. And eventually the moment came on a quick corner kick. Um ball played in and la very at the last minute and it's extremely, extremely heartbreaking for Arsenal fans. Um to drop points in that manner. But um, eventually it, it, it came, and but this was a city team that looked very, very devoid, very, very devoid of uh, uh, of chance creation, and they it wasn't good enough. It was a lot of praying, shooting the ball, and praying. Um, uh, you know, for a team playing against ten men, um, you had a, they had twenty eight shots and all that, and you know they dominated that second half. But again, not enough clear cut opportunities. And eventually the moment came, uh, you know, on the short corner kick being played in. Um, Jack Grealish playing the ball into Kovacic. Good save by Raya and then Stones with the follow-up. And, uh, and yeah, it's... Uh, and then Holland throwing the ball at um, Gabriel afterwards and all the things that ensued after the kickoff. Um, I love that part of the game in terms of the rivalry and all that. The Holland throwing the ball at Gabriel, that's that's pretty weak, you know. That's pretty weak. He has his back turned to you. Not only did Holland throw the ball at Gabriel's head, but he went on to run away. You know, if you're gonna do something like that, at least you know 
stay there for the moment so you know you, you know you could be a man don't don't just commit and you know don't don't just do something like that from you know with someone who back turned and then just run away you know for me that was a little weak um but um yeah it, obviously the, you know disappointing blow from arsenal i i think you know with the fact that they are you know down to 10 men and they were coming in without Odegaard, their most creative player, probably their only creative player. Um, you know, they would have taken a point at the start, but with the way that second, you know, with the way that they conceded that second goal, obviously it's going to be really, really heartbreaking. But look, you know, Arsenal may have lost the battle. And I know this is a really cr crazy thing to say, given the circumstances of what happened, but the, you know, but the war, you know, they, they, you know, they might have lost. They didn't lose the battle, actually. They drew the bottle, but they might have lost two points. But the biggest thing that could have came out of this game for Arsenal is that Rodri ACL injury, which we'll discuss later on. Because, um, you know, look, obviously, it's, you know, we don't wish upon injury on anyone. And I, definitely, I don't. I'm not an Arsenal fan or anything. And it's sad to see someone go down with torn ACLs. We were devastating, not just for him, but... Uh, for, the, for Manchester City, but, um, you know, that could be something that could give it Arsenal real hope going forward, so...